interested, GTO everybody, this is just one of those builds at SEMA that people cannot get enough. This is absolutely brilliant and so much to it. There is so much happening. We're going to have a chat with Sean, the designer behind this awesome classic and see exactly what's happened. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank good. you so much for meeting me. This is beautiful. Thank you. There has been crowds around this. This is my fourth day and every day there has been so much crowd. So I'm so grateful that here early in the morning we have a moment to have a look at it in detail. Yes. What have you got and how did this come about? Uh, well, we have a 1967 GTO titled Twisted GTO. And it's owned by Steve Aguilar of Fullerton, California. And this is our second effort, our second build together that we did. First one being a 71 Z28 Camaro. And we wanted to keep this car really cl classic, really timeless. We wanted to stick to the GTO DNA and what an original GTO would be or should be. And uh, really build upon that from the foundation and just kind of make a more luxurious, more European inspired American car. Before we look um, further, tell me about yourself, Sean, what do you do? Um, I'm an automotive designer by trade. Um, I've been designing cars for about 20 years now. I graduated Art Center College of Design, which is a pretty esteemed uh, design school that specializes in automotive design. And upon graduation, I worked for OEM companies and car, major car manufacturers. But the passion of custom cars from what I was raised upon just kind of drug me back into designing custom cars. So now I work doing one-off vehicles and one-off cars for uh, unique individuals mm -hmm. and, and, and bespoke vehicles. Yeah. How much involvement do you have? Is it just you rendering and giving ideas and putting it together so the customer can visualize and mm -hmm. see? Or is it, does it go beyond the scope of things where you will actually find uh, vendors for them or companies that will work together? It, you know, it, it varies. Um, if a customer, com it depends on which level they want to bring me in at and how much they want me involved. Some people want a drawing and I'll do that and that's it and it'll take me a day's worth of work. This car right here was about three and a half years in the making. Um, I was engaging strategic partners that I'm involved with mm -hmm. in my business and project managing vendors with Steve Aguilar and handling things from the sketch to the graphic design to the display to the CAD modeling, to organizing 3D scanning, um, to even the transportation. So it's kind of like... That's, that, that is huge. Like yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let, let's stop right there. This yeah. is not just about you um, putting the ideas together, but uh -huh. you are our project managing the entire build. Creatively, yes. Creatively. Yes. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that st um, stood out to me was the fact that you would talk to vendors. Mm -hmm. And that's huge for somebody who's never built a car or wants to get something involved and they don't know too much about the industry, mm -hmm. you're the guy for them. Yes. Yeah, I'm kind of the go-between to translate what I do two-dimensionally and visually communicate what they want and then implement that with a vendor or a builder. And it's very important because I always say you wouldn't build a house without architectural drawings. You just wouldn't start putting up, you know, the roof and the wood and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You'd have to get things put together on blueprints, then you got to get it certified, then you got to get it out there with the right contractor. It's really no different with the car. You do a series of drawings, you get the right people involved, we put it in CAD, we make sure it works functionally, and then we build the part. I always kind of say something that it's better to sketch on paper than better to sketch in metal. Because when you start sketching in sheet metal, things get to be very, very expensive. Yes. What I mean by that is if you don't have a direction on a custom hood or a custom spoiler or a custom front end, you know, that, that builder can waste, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in time is money. Time, time is money. Time and is then, money. And then the owner gets frustrated because he's like what's going on here, this isn't what I wanted. So yes. it's better to get these things out and visually communicate all aspects of the build. Yeah. I am all for that. You know, rendering is something that is a must. It's an sure. investment that you will not regret. Yeah. As you all know through my build, how much I have appreciated <laughs> the rendering process. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Especially if you're doing it for the yeah. first time. Yeah. It, it is so vital, so important. So yeah. amazing that gets done. Now, Sean, tell me this. Is this built from the ground up or has it been a restoration? Well, it was a father-son project at first. Okay. Uh, Steve bought the car and it was in pretty good shape about five, six years ago. Um, and he was really just going to make it a driver car and make it something functional he could drive around town. We were going to swap the frame, swap the motor, and that was it. But as you know, these things have a tendency to be steamrolling into something else. And so now it turned into this really extensive build. Wow. So, where should we start? Because there is so much happening here. Yeah, we could start with 
one of the highlights that I find is the nicest part of the car, which is the interior. Um, we kept the, the whole car on the exterior very clean and very elegant. Um, but on the interior, we went absolutely full custom. Should I open the door? Absolutely. Congratulations is also in order because one of only five gold Good Guys Awards has been awarded right here. Yeah. And that, that, that is a huge thing here in SEMA because there are so many cars here and there are so many different builds right. and they all look great. But to get one of the five, it's, it's, you it's know you've gone yeah. above that line. Exactly. Yeah. So we're very appreciative of that award. And <laughs> we also congrats. got a TMI Best Interior Award too, which we're extremely proud of because we do feel like the interior is the highlight of the car. This is TMI? No, it's not TMI, but TMI recognizes good leather and good, good interior design and the show with their award. So, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, okay, so we yeah. were honored with that. Yeah, no, um, SoCal Interiors and Rods in Ontario, California, Marco and Mondo Flores did the interior. Um, it's completely scanned. Uh, we scanned the whole body from the inside, and I did a series of drawings and renderings that communicated those with different 3D modelers. So every panel and every piece in the interior is 3D modeled and, and milled out one-off. So there's really, except for maybe... I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't. I don't think there's one part of the interior that's that you can't. That's not. You can't store by. You know, I learned about 3D scanning for the interiors. Sure. Just this week at SEMA. Okay. And um, I am blown away by the technology, and I'm, I absolutely love it because we're getting such clean lines. Yeah. Such a great finish because of that technology, yeah. and um, to be, 3D scan the entire interiors and then decide. Okay, this panel will fit right here, this mm -hmm. panel will fit right here. It's just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's really an easy function. Not, I don't want to say easy, but it's a more functional way of going about it. It's more accessible when the car is done to actually service the panels underneath and the B side. And you can really just refine the design and get, it, get things as functional and the precise fit that you want. This is, the second, the, this is the, another great interiors that I have seen. Um, and the other one that I saw, which is just as good as this and I think this one is actually going a little bit above that because I'm loving the color yeah. they were both through their 3d scanning yes. yeah and I think it's and that's because I, I like I said to you this morning I said I didn't even see the interiors because there were so many so much crowds around it right. but this is the reason it stands out is because of that scanning process yeah I think the digital process is giving us new refined shapes and design process for the interiors I think we're gonna see a lot more robust interiors in the next couple of years through this process and I guess it cuts the labor time as well, would you say I so? I don't know about that, but I think your outcome is a lot more accurate. Less time for errors. Well, and not also that, but, you know, when you build a part, the, you know, the ability to flip the symmetry, um, refine it through the machining, yeah, it's just a lot more accurate, maybe. There is a detailed interview um, with one of the top guys who does the 3D rendering of the interior so I will put a link so you guys can have a look and listen to the process that is involved because it is the latest and it's I, I think it's great I think it's great and it makes the interiors really stand out and pop okay now talk to me so come around here mm -hmm. and tell us about the dash so the dash is completely one off as well um, we started with the inspiration of the original 67 GTO dash, but we wanted it to be more elegant and more refined. So I 3D, 3D printed, or 3D scanned the whole thing, built it in the CAD program, and then we made this actually dash pad that goes over the dash that has this nice nickel trim around the whole instrument panel cluster. And then the whole instrument panel cluster itself is billet aluminum. Wow. And then all the black you see is actually um, kind of a ghosted wood texture. It looks like it's piano black, but it's a ghosted wood texture. Wow. And we feel like that actually, yeah, you can barely see it. But, but uh, I'm guessing in the sun, yeah. it, w it would stand out. Exactly, yeah. Is it, is, it, um, is it over here as well? Yes. Yeah. You know, the camera picks it up. We can appreciate it even through here through the camera because you can really see that hints of brown. Wow. I'm loving the steering wheel. What's in the center there? So that's an interesting story. So the Pontiac Indian Head was an old logo that they originally used. 
we actually took Steve's son, since it was a father-son build, and he is so close to his son, and he wanted to put that bond into the car itself, so he scanned the Indian head, or scanned his son, and then we sculpted that into the Indian head. So the Indian head you're actually seeing is a reflection of him. Wow, I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, often you get such a high-end build, and sometimes it can, you can lose the personalization. Sure. But right here, that's, it's, that's beautiful. So just an interesting thing that I think builds an emotional connection to the family of the car. There is so much happening. I don't know where to start first. I'm loving the headliner. <laughs> the headliner is actually pretty, pretty bananas, yeah. It's, wow. And does that light up the whole thing? Um, it lights up towards the front. Towards the front. Yeah. And I'm guessing it's that same wood grain tech. Um, exactly, yeah. Wow. And then it's leather headliner all around it as well. Yeah. Before we go to the shifter, I just want to show everybody that the centerpiece, the console, the one that goes all the way through has been a big hit this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has been a big hit and especially with bucket seats and if you've got back seats, it's one of those things that's just looks absolutely beautiful. And I've seen it in almost all of the high-end cars, everybody. Now, Steve, uh, if we flip this, mm -hmm. does it go all the way? Yes, that's storage. That's what right. I thought. Okay. Yeah. You know, we still have a cup holder, still very functional. Yeah. Yeah, because he will drive the car. And he yeah. will drive the car. Yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. You know, we've dived right into the interiors because it's one of those things that really sticks out to you. But that under the hood, the engine bay is just as beautiful. Let's go and have a look at that. And we definitely need to come back to the rocker panels. Yes. <laughs> we definitely need to do yeah. that. Like I said, there is so much happening. All right, let's have a look here. Talk to me, what have we got? So this is a 427 Dart LS-based engine. It's supercharged, Whipple supercharged. Um, the engine bay is completely custom refabricated with a whole host of custom billet aluminum parts to kind of brighten things up. We had everything done in nickel from Ogden Chrome. Um, the core support cover is custom fabricated. One of the highlights of the engine is actually the valve covers that we custom designed. These were machined by EVOD Industries in San Diego, California. And then we kind of made it a two-tone valve cover and wanted to put a lot of detail into it. So it's a very highlighted piece. We're pretty proud of that. Um, the coil pack covers are actually from Ring Brothers. They actually don't make that, but I know Mike and Jim Ring pretty well, so they kind of popped one out of a mold for me. Um, we feel like it cleans the whole car up and kind of integrates the supercharger a lot better, makes it look really uniform. So that's kind of a nice piece as well. So we wanted something that was very functional, but you know, looked like a muscle car engine bay. Nothing too street rod. This is beautiful. Sometimes everything gets covered and it looks great. Yes, yeah. But it's then other times when everything is like this here, it just gives it a very mean, <laughs> strong look. Right, right. Love the detailing right here. The, um, the radiator is nowhere to be seen, Steve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The custom core support cover, everything covers that, yeah. Look at that. What about on the front here? The front's actually relatively stock in the middle. Um, all this right here is stock. We replated everything from Ogden Chrome as well. These right here are replicas that are shrunken down about a third, and then we remachined re those by Evod as well, and re-nickled those. The custom front bumper, they have a license plate box here. We deleted that and reworked the peak in the middle. We brought the whole bumper in. Um, these are custom billet headlight bezels, and Andy Mee from Hot Rods and Custom Stuff actually reworked the whole front end, flushed these in more, and then we put a little bevel into here that lines up with this body line. It's just a nice detail that makes it a little bit more uniform. This is a really hard area of the car to get worked into. Then we created this soft bottom triangle right here. Wow. We also had to custom fit the bumper to be sympathetic to this line as well. We wanted these two lines to be parallel and mate together. This is actually really round from stock, and there's almost a two-finger 
uh, panel gap in between this. So when you bring it all in, it really created a weird contrast. So we had to fit this bumper to this once we created this shape. Loving so how the bumper is whole getting tucked in. There's a whole different peak from top view. It's it, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Wow. Sean, there is so much work and details involved in this. Where did you get your inspiration for designing, and especially such small details? Um, I think every car is different. You know, every car strikes me with different inspiration. I think this car in particular, I was trying to kind of look at what the original GTO guys did back in the 60s at GM. And, you know, Bill Mitchell, the head of design, John DeLorean, the head of marketing and branding. What would they do if they had an ultimate, unlimited budget to build the ultimate GTO? Mm -hmm. um, the people back in GM in the 60s were men of excess, and so it's like, what if they were given the opportunity to not care about how much the car cost, but what would they have? Mm -hmm. And that was the driving inspiration behind this. I did not want to make it not look like a GTO. Some cars, you want to take the original car out because they're maybe slightly mm, not aesthetically pleasing. But this car, I wanted to fully embrace what it is. You know, I, nobody wants to see an overly customized GTO. No, you've done it well because yeah. the the GTOs they're just they're great cars. Right, they're great cars to begin with. The lines, the foundation is there. All they need to do is be tuned up, sweet, and influenced. Speaking of lines, check out how this flows right here. So, who who mainly worked on the build? So we had a variety of craftsmen that worked on the build. Um, when we first started the car, Road to Shop um, initially did a lot of the fabrication, did the, 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 the chassis, of course. It runs on a fast-track IRS Road to Shop frame. And we had them work on it for the engine bay and a lot of the initial metal work. Um, things got kind of slow during the pandemic. We didn't know what direction we wanted to take the car. We brought the car back to California. We stored it for a while. We kind of did some more drawings and wanted to figure out the direction before we really wanted to do something um, to get a game plan and we started to back up probably 2000 maybe the end of 2019 and we had some independent contractors work on it that did some initial metal work and then from there uh, we put it in with my really good friend Andy Mee's shop Hot Rods and Custom Stuff he's a head painter there um, Randy Clark owns it and we had some of the metal work redone there including these stainless custom rocker trim that you see that was originally pot metal from the GTO. Uh, we brought those in tighter. They look a lot more quality. Uh, mounted the billet badging on there. Has it been tucked in as well, Atad? Well, they're, 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 they fit tighter a little bit. We added a little bit sharper bevel. I mean, they don't deviate too much from the original, but if you were to hold the original on there and look at that, the originals were kind of like beaten up cake pans, <laughs> you know what I mean, compared to this. So, That's what I mean. This yeah. is, it's very different. And, and we felt like they didn't. We tried to run them, and we went back and forth, and we're like, should we machine the part? Should we hand fab the part? Should we just clean up the original ones? Every time we held up the original ones, they just didn't really look as robust as what we thought we could do if we machined it or custom made it. Um, the problem with custom making it is the billet is so rigid and hard, then you have to modify the body to fit, fit the billet. Yes. So that would have worked, but where we were at in metal right then, we didn't feel like that was going to be too easy. So we just went ahead and started uh, fabricating them in metal. Um, Nigel Papa did all the hand fabrication work, including the front and rear bumpers, and he did a tremendous job. Yeah, he's truly talented. Well, the stance of any classic and one that strikes as much as this is doing is definitely due to some the, of the image in the wheels. Yes, yes. Check yeah. this out, everybody. We do have um, the same emblem that you had on the steering wheel. Right, we carried, carried the theme over. on the steering wheel into the wheel cap. And the wheel's actually a combination of, like, the torque thrust wheel, if you combine it with the original GTO rally wheel. If you kind of overlaid those two wheels together, what wheel would you get? And that's the new wheel that you're seeing right here. Wow. And then the head painter on the car, Andy Me. He two-toned the whole entire wheel in different Cerakoting to highlight the different contrasts and shapes. So we wanted a lighter, a lighter color to illustrate the American Torque Thrust feel, and then we wanted the darker shapes to kind of illustrate the rally wheel. And then, of course, the chrome nickel from Ogden Chrome kind of ties it all in. I'm speechless, and you lot know that when I've got nothing to say, I'm just mesmerized. Loving the different tones here. I'm absolutely loving the different tones, the different textures, the dash of red around it all. It's just, it's, it's absolutely magnificent. Let's move over to the back. Let's see what else is happening. Mm -hmm. How long did the design take for yourself? 
Oh, I was designing all the way up until last week. So, what were you doing last week? Small, ba small badging, actually. That didn't quite make its way to the car. But, yeah, we were. I was doing things, uh, caps, oil caps, badging, um, small seat badging, all the way until, like, last week, the week before seeing that. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow, you, you've got such a passion for this, and it yeah. really shows. Thank you. So. Loving the back window. Yeah, the back window was kind of a highlight as well. We really wanted the package tray to be a focus area. So we took the, you know, the speaker surrounds. Those are all custom gold aluminum. We really, really, really wanted it to just be like jewel box type area in the back. But we feel like package trays are kind of a forgotten area in cars. So we really wanted to make it really, really robust in the back. I love the way that it, just, it sits and it just shows the interiors because the interiors are just... Sure. Like they're just, uh, they're striking. They're absolutely striking. I'm lost for words. And f even from here, you're like, wow. Just want to show everybody standing back here, the view that you get. Wow. This has gotten a lot of attention here at SEMA. It was also um, one of the top 10 with HRIA's list as well. It was. It made, it made the short list of HRIA's list. Uh, That's a huge honor. Congratulations. Thank Very you. well deserved. Thank you. If you like your classics and you like your work and your custom work, then you know what you are looking at. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm just looking at it thinking this is beautiful. It looks pretty. But for all you gearheads and your car folks sitting at home, you can appreciate just how beautiful this GTO is. What's next on the list? You mean next projects? Yep. Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking about this morning because this project's done, and I'm like, okay, which one's going to be put on the on the front burner now? Um, a couple things. I'm working on a really extensive scout with a builder in Arizona. Um, I hope to have that here this year or next year, SEMA. Um, and a couple more things with uh, working on with Jesus Lopez. Actually, he brought a really nice Camaro here, but we got a couple cars coming out with him. And, you know, a few projects that I always can't talk about. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we're excited. And hopefully next SEMA we can see you again and see exactly what you've designed. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate this. Thank Thanks. you so much.